Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Collinwood for YouTube. I'm back with another video for you guys. This is my final video for the month of May. So I'll be, so I'll be back in June. <laughs> my final video tonight is entitled How the Afterlife or the Super or sorry, how the supernatural found use for the living. And really, you know, this is this is something that really was a, a constant throughout Dark Shadows, especially once you were getting further along in the beginning episodes. I would say, you know, the beginning episodes, are they gothic? Yes. Are there hints of the supernatural? Yes. I think the biggest hint of the supernatural is how uneasy that that Maggie seems to be about Collinwood and how even it's affecting Vicky, how her uneasiness is affecting Vicky, Vicky, uh, Victoria Winter. So you can definitely see and feel that, that something's a bit off. You know, you don't necessarily see a ghost right away. Now, I want to get into the introduction of Josette's ghost because. This here is where you finally get to meet the first ghost of Dark Shadows. So you're in the old house with Matthew Morgan, David Collins, and Victoria Winters. Matthew, you know, has sort of scolded David that, hey, you're not even supposed to be in here. You know, I've told you not to be in here. It's dangerous in here. You could get hurt in here. And Victoria Winters, Matthew Morgan, and David Collins leave. And then you hear this sound, the music, and you know, the pale portraits glowing. And it's like, what, what's going on here? And you see this woman walking out of the portrait, and it's a ghost. And this is the ghost of Josette Collins. Really, Josette Dupre Collins. I mean, that's something... You know, we're going to learn. Another thing, too, is in, in a weird way, Josette sort of has two themes when you think about it. It's this ghostly theme they play for her when she first appears. And late, we're not because we're not going to get the music box until Barnabas Collins arrives. We don't we don't ever really hear like the music or see the music box really so until Barnabas arrives. So. Now, Josette comes out of the portrait, she looks around, she goes outside, she starts dancing around, and it's like, oh, oh crap, <laughs> what's this ghost going to do? So, what the ghost does, really, ultimately, is use the living, and the one person it's going to use is Victoria Winters, for sure. It also... It also tries to communicate with David, too. It doesn't just try to commute with Victoria Winters. Let's look at some key examples, because after she comes out of the portrait. So what was so important for Josette to now come out of the portrait? What, what was so important about now, about this moment? Well, let's look at this moment. Okay, Matthew Morgan is going to kill Bill Malloy and kidnap, eventually kidnap Victoria Winters. Josette, along with the widows, kill Matthew Morgan. So, what was, was it her move to come out of this portrait to help dispose of Matthew Morgan? You got to think that there's got to be something bigger. So, so what is it? Because you don't really want to believe that this one, this ghost simply came out of the portrait to help the ghost of the widow's hill <laughs> to to kill this normal person another hint too is the wind of widow's hill you sort of hear the what sounds like crying in the wind you don't actually hear tears but the way the wind blows it's roger says it's the widows i actually do agree with roger i do think that's the widow's of what is hill so really again there's hints of ghosts throughout dark shadows the supernatural if you will so 
I was talking about you don't I don't think they that was her only reason. So for coming out of the portrait was was uh, just to kill Matthew. So you meet this woman who's sitting in the diner. She has blonde hair. And you kind of find out that this is Laura Collins. This is Roger's wife. And it's like, so wait, David's mother is actually in town. Why doesn't she just roll up to Collins? Collinwood? She seems to be acting strange. Lo and behold, you're going to come to find out that this woman is a phoenix. And you also find out that this woman knows Josette personally. Josette appears in the cottage, in, in Matthew Morgan's cottage, while Laura's holding David, and she's reaching out to David. And Laura's like, no, he's mine, Josette. What a scene. And another thing, too, is Josette's going to still use Victoria Winters. She's going to speak through Victoria Winters at a seance. She's also going to continue to use Victoria Winters. Like I said, the supernatural in Dark, in dark Shadows used the, li the living. It really went hand in hand here when Frank Gardner, Victoria Winters are driving down the road. Josette and Frank's like, what? I smell Jasmine. She's trying to tell me something. Boom. That Because... Josette's perfume was jasmine, jasmine perfume, jasmine flowers. So, Josette wants Victoria Winters to go to a graveyard. There's something in this graveyard she wants her to see. Again, you have a ghost using a living person to accomplish her goal, to accomplish, to get rid of Laura. Beautiful job. And I'm going to point something out, too, here in a bit. So, eventually, Laura does burn herself up without David. David, they help, you know, Burke and Victoria get David out of the shack before it burns up. So, now, Laura goes bye-bye, right? We've already seen, we've already seen where a ghost uses... A living person and is also directed out to David. Also, to Laura. Laura is seducing Burke Devlin, by the way, and Roger a bit. So she she's not necessarily using using them to control their minds. I mean, you could debate she might be, but she's not got them under such control where she's like telling them what exact where she's going. Okay, go kill this person. It's not that type of deal. It's more. She's more seducing them to get what she wants, which is to you know, burn David alive. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a, that's a thing. She she wants to burn her son alive. Um, who, who's the boy's father? DNA test are still pending. <laughs> depending on who you ask, I think it's Bert Devlin. Actually, I think David David is Burke is David's son. I think, in my opinion. If you disagree, please let me know. Who who who's David's daddy? <laughs> I might hashtag that on Twitter. Who's David's daddy? <laughs> Mark Gilman. <laughs> okay, oh my god. <coughs> oh shit. Oh my god. Uh, shout out to my buddy Mark Gilman. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> so you have you still have they get rid of the Phoenix. Now, here's what's interesting. We've seen Josette go into the body of Victoria Winters at the Great House during a seance. So Josette's not afraid to go into the Great House, right? Keep this in mind as when Jason McGuire comes into town and then we were introduced to Willie Loomis. And then Willie Loomis sees the portrait of Barnabas Collins. Keep that in mind, right? 
Josette, who made all this effort to come out of a portrait to ward off a to help ward off a phoenix, to help make sure that no harm would come to David Collins, no matter who his dad is, right? All that effort, okay. She uses the living. She helps. She uses Victoria. She even tries to reach out to David to accomplish what she wanted to get the, to get the hell rid of Laura. Okay, she makes all that effort, right? Here's Willie Loomis. Now keep in mind, at the time we don't know Josette and Barnabas know each other, right? We don't know they were meant to be wed. But still, we know that now. Keep that in mind, too. Now, you have Willie Loomis, who's looking at the portrait of Barnes Collins. You hear the heart, the, the eyes are bulging out of the portrait here. Boom, 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 boom. You know, basically, he's summoning Willie's. And all the while, Josette doesn't reach out to Vicky. Josette doesn't reach out to Carolyn. Now, Josette has reached out to Vicky before, but she makes no effort to now. Why? Why? If, if This is why I say Barnabas isn't necessarily bad. Because if he were bad, if he really meant the family harm, Josette would have stopped it. Josette, the ghost of Josette Collins wanted Barnabas to get out. She wanted him to be free. But, but just like she's not interfering to stop it, she can do nothing to actually make it happen. She's got to let it happen naturally. So it has happened naturally. Here's this guy. Here's this thief. Willie Loomis, he's greedy. So he's researching the Collins family legends, especially about the Naomi Collins legend, which is what? Naomi Collins was given jewels by a pirate, and she was buried with her jewels. Where was she buried? In the mausoleum at Eagle Hill Cemetery. So, one night, Willie Loomis goes to the Eagle Hill Cemetery. He goes to the mausoleum. He has a pulley system, a crowbar. He ties this pulley system to, to the, the ring of the lion's mouth. He ties it to the coffin, the ring of the coffin. He pulls, he's trying to pull the lid off Naomi Collins' coffin. He ends up pulling the ring down from the lion's mouth and it opens a secret passage. And if you notice, John Carlin, Willie Loomis, is shocked that this happens. Wasn't expecting it. Again, Josette has taken no action. None. None to stop it. None to attempt to stop it. Now, again, nothing. That's key to me. Again, keep in mind, and I'm going to stress this, and so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Josette, who made every attempt to get rid of Laura, is making no attempt to stop Barnabas from getting out. None. I'm not talking about possessing Willie here. I'm talking about Possessing Victoria Winters and making her write something in English. Or possessing Victoria Winters and having her try to stop Willie. Or have the sheriff try to stop Willie. None of that. None of that's going on. It's because Josette wanted Barnabas to get out. She didn't want to stop it. Because if she did, she would have actually made an attempt. That's my case, the Barnabas is in bed. So Willie lets Barnabas out, long story short, right? So, Barnabas is free. 
He introduces himself to the family. Josette, part of Josette's job is done. Part of it. Now, she's sort of realizing, oh, okay, you're a bit bitter that you got tied up. So she hears Barnabas out at the old house when he tells her those lines. I've talked about them before. Where he looks at her portrait and says, I was a Collins. Where were you when I was turned into something my own father lived? If his ghost is here with yours, tell him I've come home. Tell him I am free and alive now. The chains at which he are bound have found me with have been broken. So, Josette already knew that, though. Again, Barnabas is unaware of the phoenix. Although, I'll, I'll say this. And here's my biggest question with Barnabas. It's not about the Maggie Evans saying we all know that up and down. We all know he kidnaps Maggie because she looks like Josette. That's not my question. When Barnabas initially dies, and he does die in 1795, there's, there's no there's no mistake in he dies, right? When Barnabas now we know when Jo that Josette dies too, so there's got to be some sort of difference with death, right? Okay, Sarah dies, she becomes a ghost, right? Josette dies, she becomes a ghost. Now, the way they die is different, just like everybody else. There's, there, Everybody dies differently, usually. So, Sarah dies of an illness. Josette jumps to her death. Naomi is poisoned. We never see Naomi's ghost. We never see Joshua's ghost. We see Josette's ghost. We see Sarah's ghost. And their ghosts are different, too. They're not the same method of ghosts. Okay. I would say Josette's ghost is more of a spectral ghost that turns into a formation of a person. Where Sarah's ghost is more like a person and then fades away without you seeing it. So my question is, when Barnabas dies, he's obviously going to come back. He's going to be undead. He's, he's a vampire. Josette knows certain things when she dies. That's why she comes out of the portrait. She knows Laura's coming. I gotta believe that. She knew Laura was coming. What does Barnabas know? Okay. What does Barnabas Collins know? Once he dies in 1795. Before, before he gets chained up. Before he gets chained up for over 100 some odd years. What kind of information did Barnabas, if any, did Barnabas Collins get laying there while dead? Did he go to purgatory? Did he talk to Mr. Best? I'm serious. Because we've seen where people die and they go to Mr. Best's little waiting area. By the way, you're welcome, Tim Burton. Well, you shit like that and be <laughs> you owe Dark Shadows the only apology. You owe the thank you. But, so, did Barnabas meet Mr. Best? And Mr. Best explain to him what was about to happen? Who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe he said, you're not dead. You're going to wake up here soon. Barnabas said, what? Now, we don't see this interaction, but I'm saying this could have happened. Because, again, we don't know. We don't know if Barnabas saw anything or not, why he was dead. He was literally dead. Then he opened his eyes, and he was undead when the sun went down. He was a vampire. He kills Angelique. <laughs> who, who doesn't really die. <laughs> who doesn't really die, right? She's not really dead. So there's that. Well, her, her physical body does, but she's she's still around. She's still around. So 
here's Barnabas. He dies. He gets killed. He comes back as a vampire. What information does he have? He now knows that he can perform black magic. He knows he has powers. What else does he know? Now, after getting chained in a coffin for, for over 100 some odd years, he's back free, only to turn around and try to kidnap Maggie Evans. He kills some farm animals. <laughs> some farm animals go this. And as my buddy John Philip Betcourt says, has said, if you if the farm animals are going missing, if they turned up drained of blood, the, we may have to suspect Barnabas is alive. <laughs> um, is back again. So, shout out to him too. So you have, <laughs> you have this. You have the farm animals go missing. Will Willie's getting drained of blood. He's about half out of it. He, they move him and Bar after Barnabas's introduction. They move it. They eventually move into the old house. Will, everyone finds out Willie's working for Barnabas. No one's happy about it. He ends up kidnapping Maggie. Even though he commissioned her father to por paint a portrait of him. Remember what I've said about Josette? Josette's done nothing up until this point. Josette's just watching at this point. I don't... When Maggie Evans comes down dressed like Josette, I don't feel Josette is in Maggie's body. I feel I feel that Maggie's been so mentally beat up, she's beginning to believe she's Josette. But as she hears her father, so she begins to fight it. Also, when, when does this introduction of Sarah come? When Maggie is down in the cellar. And it's so well done. It's so well done. And now, this is being done because of why. Sarah is not happy with her brother. It's, it's, it's not just being done because Josette's tagging out to Sarah. I do think there is some of that. I think Josette's like, if I go to Barnabas, he might not listen to me. You can go to Barnabas, and he'll listen to you. Because... The one person that Barnabas loved outside of me is you. He loved you. It killed. Listen to me. Barnabas, as a when Bar when Sarah dies, Barnabas is a vampire. It breaks Barnabas's heart when Sarah dies. It really does. Jonathan Fritz's performance when Sarah dies. I'll try to find the clip and leave a link in the description box. When she dies, it is heartbreaking, and it breaks Barnabas' heart. So, Josette knows the one person who could reach Barnabas is Sarah. So, here is the ghost of Sarah Collins, who gets Maggie out of prison, <laughs> out, of, out, of the, out of the dungeon Barnabas has stored her in. She's rescued. Now, she begins to play in front of the old house, where she grew up. Willie begins to see her. Hey, Barnabas, I keep seeing this little girl. No, don't you mean boy? No, little girl, Barnabas. I saw a little girl. Little girl? Yeah, she was dressed in these weird old clothes. And Barnabas begins to think, like, that, that, he thinks to himself, that sounds like my sister. And Willie's sort of noticing his looks. Like, he's not saying that, but he's giving this look. And Barnabas like, do you know who it is? You couldn't have saw a little girl like that. Okay? So. Then. You have what you have people. You have water teasing him. I saw your sister Sarah. What? Oh I'm sorry. Did I say sister? I meant ancestor. And Barnabas is not happy with it. Then. After Woodard's death. And you have Dr. Hoffman. I spoke to Sarah today. You what? He, he choked. He's choking Julia Hoffman. I'll definitely leave a link to this. Because there is a link to this. Doors blow open. And walk Sarah Collins. That goes to Sarah. To confront her brother finally. To finally confront him. Hey. 
it, it's she doesn't say enough is enough, but in every way she is saying it. And it's well done. Again, the ghosts are talking to the living. You have the ghost of Sarah that talks to David. It talks to Willie. It talks to, to Dr. Woodard. And it talks to Hoffman. That is four living people that Sarah interact with. Also, Matt, well, Maggie too, so five. And she talks to her brother. She has a confrontation. Amazing. It's amazing what Dark Shadows did with the afterlife of the, of, you have the supernatural and how it used the living. It really is. And you can question what else did they do that we did not see? Again, did Mr. Bess interact with Barnabas when he initially died? I would say yes. We may not have seen it, but it may have happened. Um, which, again, that's still cool. So, you, you have that. And that happens. You have, you have this, this confrontation between brother and sister. Obviously, there's 1795. We're, we're introduced to Angelique finally. We know there's a witch. I've talked about Barnabas' death. Now, let's talk about the Swarlock and Nicholas Blair. Barnabas is familiar with Nicholas. He met him in Martinique. He, kn he knows this is not Angelique's brother. He knows this is not. He knows Angelique has no brother. So, Barnabas has to now deal with Nicholas. And you notice, too, that once Barnabas, once Barnabas is, can walk into the sunlight for the first time at the hospital, he tries to tell, eventually, Dr. Lang, Angelia, about a witch, about Angelique, about that there is a witch. That's how he got cursed. That's how this all happened. Here is Dr. Julia Hoffman. Here's Dr. E or Dr. Eric Lang. Who both have treated Barnabas. Who both know he was a vampire. Yet they don't believe in a witch. Julia Hoffman talked to a goddamn ghost. Okay. Julia Hoffman has talked to a ghost. And treated a vampire. Dr. Eric Lane has treated a vampire. And by the way is conducting an experiment. To bring the dead. De collecting dead parts. And going to bring a person to life. Yet neither believe in a witch. It's amazing. It really is. It's one of the most amazing things in Dark Shadows. Until when Julia finally believes. Because she's seen, the, she's not only experienced the dream curse, Dr. Lane dies. Dr. Eric Lane dies. That's what helps wake Julie up, too. That, yes, okay, there's a witch. There's a witch, part of us. I believe you. You should have believed him to begin with. Um, by the way, we have this smack. We have this, the, the bitch, the uh, Julia bitch smack, <laughs> Cassandra, who is Angelique. Um, so, amazing. Again, a lot of, and that's the thing too, just because the living interact with certain aspects of the supernatural, it doesn't mean they believe every aspect of the supernatural, which is another amazing thing about Dark Shadows. So there might be a person who appears in a new Dark Shadows, a new character, who believes in one aspect and doesn't believe in another. It's really, really interesting what Dark Shadow, how Dark Shadows, how deep their characters were. Because it gives you, it gives you that believability of, hey, this character, they might believe this and this, but they're not believing this. 
and that, and that's okay. You get their logic. Okay, witchcraft. Really, part of witchcraft? Come on, Barnabas. Witchcraft, really? So, again, hey, what? I don't, again, I've always found that amazing because, like I said, Julia Hoffman talks to a ghost. She knows other people have talked have talked to Sarah. Also, Julia Hoffman knows she has used hypnotism. Also, again, Julia Hoffman helped Barnabas. She, kno she knows he's a vampire. Eric Lane has helped Barnabas. I, I rest my case on it. Now, we have Frankenstein's monster. I've talked about Adam prior. You have... Eventually, we're going to have zombies... We have a werewolf in Chris Jennings. We have other vampires in Angelique and Tom Jennings. Our first real werewolf is Chris Jennings. And it's holy sh holy shit, people are going to die. Really, the werewolf brought a whole new level of danger too. Adam was dangerous. The werewolf was really dangerous. Not necessarily Chris, the werewolf. Once the full moon was up, the werewolf was a dangerous thing. And it was beautifully done. Beautifully done. Again, also too with the supernatural, I want to get into Mr. Best here. So I'm, I apologize for jumping. Here is Mr. Best. Death. This is Dark Shadow's representation of death itself. Here is this gentlemanly man who's well, who's dressed to the nines. And he is very gentlemanly and very serious about his profession. And his profession is death. It is the afterlife, my friends. Mr. Best has this nice little way area. <laughs> he is fascinated by certain aspects of the living and by certain people's lives. Okay? Here's this girl who was created out of a portrait. Yet, when she jumps off a bridge, she, die, she dies. And he wants to help her find her lost love, Quentin. He, well, he wants to give her a chance to find him, I should say. So she, he brings her to life, back to life and he goes, I'll make you a deal. If you find this Quentin before so long, I'll let you live. I'll let you have your life. But if you can't, I'm going to take it. And that's the deal. It is an amazing thing. Again, also, Quentin sees Mr. Best. Again, we, we have a lot of interaction here. Great interaction. You have the, the supernatural. Not necessarily you. I won't, well, in a sense, using the living. Using the living and, and really teasing it too. Diablos. Yes. Dark Shadows had the devil. Satan himself. And I've said before, I hope if we get Diablos, if we get the devil in Dark Shadows, I've said this and I'll say this again, I hope they cast Justin B. Because I think he would make a beautiful devil. Great Satan. So. Now with Dark Shadows. <laughs> Diablos the devil in the 60s. Was a, a tall man in a, in a hood. And we went into hell. We saw hell. Great by the way. I love it. I love this interaction. Between Diablos and Angelique. And Diablos and Nicholas. Really really great stuff. Love that. I wish we would have got more of Diablos. I really do. Do I do... Am I glad that we didn't so that we could potentially now get a, a Diablos in the newer Dark Shadows? Yeah, but in the same... It's not so much... I'm not mad that we didn't... I would have been... 
I'm more mad at this religious group that pushed against this. Because, okay, if you've watched the show, you know what there, there's already been. What, why the big deal about this? You know what I mean? It's fiction. It's fiction, people. I really love how in-depth the Leviathan really were and how they were built up. Then you have the breathing. <sighs> so creepy. So, so creepy. And I love how, the again, the Leviathan are supernatural. They're using living people. They're using Elizabeth. They're using Barnabas. They, they, you notice they don't convert Roger. And here's the thing. I think Roger would have been okay with it. It's the one person who probably would have been okay with all of this. He might have been okay with it. It's amazing, right? So... They're, they're using, they're also using, uh, well, I don't want to say they're using um, Sky Rumson as so much as Sky Rumson's allowing them to use him, and he's enjoying it. Um, I mean, he gets to marry Angelique. They've had a honeymoon. He, he got the, who, who is going to complain about marrying Angelique? <laughs> like, who's, who's saying no to that job? I mean, we, we, we saw what happened after Barnabas married her and he started saying no to her. We saw what happened to that, that situation. <laughs> Who's going to make that same mistake, right? Yeah, about that. <laughs> Somebody made that mistake again. <laughs> well, really, really... Angelique gets hurt when she realizes Sky is a member of the life. And it's not so much that he said no to her. It's, it's so much he finally told her the truth. <laughs> and she got really hurt and pissed off by this. <laughs> Angelique was mad. <laughs> well, she was upset though, too. She was upset at first, but then she was mad. <laughs> she wanted some revenge. <laughs> oh, God. Barnabas got it for though. He he killed Skyrops. I honestly think Barnabas was just looking for an excuse to kill Sky so he could have Angelique all to himself again. I really do. I, I, I really suspect that. I think Barnabas was just looking for an excuse to kill Sky. I mean, he didn't need one, much of one to begin with. And as soon as he found one, what happened? He killed him. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Right. <laughs> and then there's Judas, you know, Judas Zachary. He was the living too. He really did. I mean, God, he did. Judas Zachary. My God. And then there were zombies. We got zombies in Dark Shadows. We've seen the undead. We've seen a rape. We, we, dark, when I say Dark Shadows had everything, it really had everything. And again, the supernatural used the living. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I think I've done as much as I can. Now we, again, Count Patofi. Yep, there was Count Patofi. He used the living too. But in a sense too, though he was a supernatural being, he, he was alive himself. So the gypsies used the... The gypsies used the living... So as long as they have a place and they have money. And the gypsies don't try to abuse their powers unless they get angry and get really pissed off. Or you wage war. If you try to destroy the gypsies or destroy one of their own, that's when they come at you. In many ways, the gypsies are a representation of Barnabas. Because that's the same thing with Barnabas. When you try to mess with Barnabas, he's going to destroy your ass. So, <laughs> really interesting. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this this uh, deep dive of this. Give me your thoughts. Shout, <laughs> shout outs, obviously. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You guys have a great, great night.